Okay, what's going on, everybody? We're going to get ready to get this show started. I know uh, some of y'all are, you know, trying to file on in. And we're going to get this show on the road. And uh, we got, you know, we had some breaking news from yesterday uh, that we're going to get into. And uh, what this could mean for the rest of the wide receiver core uh, that is uh, in the building. So we're definitely going to talk about that. And, um, you know, we're definitely going to talk about that and a whole lot more. So uh, we're definitely going to uh, talk about that. And also the rookies are getting ready uh, to report as well. And so we're definitely going to talk about that too. Uh, you know, we're definitely going to talk about that as well. So uh, definitely come on in and let's uh, let's talk about it and let's get right into it. So we're going to get ready to get this show started in just a few moments. And so uh, make sure you share the show out to everybody. As you'll see on the graphic, we have a new Titans wide receiver, Tyler Boyd. What could this mean for Traylon Burks? and others in the wide receiver room. And so we're going to talk about that and a lot more right here on TNT Tonight. Let's get ready in the next 60 seconds. Hope you still go. I never ran, sit and no man, I still go. Go, 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 What's going on, Tight Nation? How's everybody doing? Welcome in to TNT tonight. I am your host, Blue Enforcer, aka The Truth. And uh, we're going to have a very fun episode for you on uh, tonight. And uh, definitely going to do my best not to hold you long. Also, of course, if you are in uh, the Tennessee area, especially mainly West or North Tennessee, uh, definitely um, be safe and be careful because, of course, uh, there are some severe storms that are uh, headed in our direction. Uh, there's some severe storms heading here in Memphis, but also uh, heading up in um you know, Dyersburg, Jackson, and also towards Nashville as well. So everybody, please be safe. Uh, please be safe. Uh, please, uh, you know, definitely make sure you charge up all your phones, your uh, mobile devices, and uh, everything. And then make sure, um, you know, you have your safe spaces and things like that because it could get a little bad. Hopefully it does not. So uh, definitely, you know, sending out that alert to everybody. Uh, especially, you know, like here in Memphis, in Nashville, Dyersburg, Jackson, uh, anywhere up um, I-40, uh, definitely make sure, and anywhere in Clarksville as well, um, and maybe northern, uh, you know, northern Missouri and, you know, southern Missouri and Kentucky as well. So uh, definitely make sure uh, everybody stays safe uh, and everything. So um, just thought I'd put that out there for everybody. So Everybody, welcome into the show. Glad everybody could be with us uh, on this evening. And um, obviously we have uh, the misses of the show. We have the misses of the show. Um, my current meteorologist, who I know is following every possible weather channel and story there is when it has something to do with weather here, you know, at least in our area. So we know that... Um, is going to be the case. So definitely shout out to Sunshine Lavender, the missus. Definitely got to do that. 
CJ2K says P Burks is gone. I mean, we're definitely going to see if that is the case uh, when it comes to that. And also, of course, uh, while we're at it, uh, definitely make sure everybody go ahead and like the show. Go ahead and uh, put a like on that uh, on the like button. Go ahead and smash that like button uh, if you're on YouTube. Also, if you're watching uh, via uh, Twitter, go ahead and um, give a like on that and retweet the show out as well to everybody. Send that out to your friends and send that out to everybody in uh, Titan Nation under hashtag Titans, under hashtag Titan Up. And, uh, and definitely make sure you do that so that way everybody in Titan Nation know what's going on. And if you are new to the channel or haven't done this yet, come on over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so that you can get uh, and hit all so you can get all the notifications whenever I go live. Uh, definitely go ahead and do that so that way if something's going on, uh, I will definitely, uh, you will definitely be in the know. And then also, of course, Check out Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. Definitely make sure you check those out as well. And I'm glad that everybody is uh, with us here. But um, CJ2K Po, okay, Ian Fuente. Okay, change the name. Okay, CJ2K Po. All right, well, definitely, I appreciate that. Um you know, prayers for y'all in Tennessee. I'm in Houston. We just had bad storm too. Yeah, I, you know what? I have heard a lot uh, recently about the storms, you know, in Texas and in Houston. Ian, my prayers to you and everybody down there in Texas as well. I know y'all got some major flooding. Uh, definitely had um, a lot of uh, rain. I, I want to say like a month full of storm, you know, a month full of rain in the last couple of days. Uh, so definitely pray for everybody down there in Texas. Um, Burks was extremely unlucky. I mean, I will probably agree with that a little bit. Burks is never a tight. Missed more games than anything. We got Titan True up in here. What's up? And Amar, uh, big Titan in the building. You know I'm here. I'm always here. Absolutely. But let's get into the breaking news that we were, you know, alluding to. And that is that the Tennessee Titans just signed former Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver Tyler Boyd. And uh, it is a one-year deal up to $4.5 million. And so, obviously, there are some incentives there and things like that. But I definitely... Uh, when I originally first heard this, I thought it was an excellent pickup. I thought they were going to get the deal done. Uh, I thought they were actually going to get the deal done, you know, before he had left. But then at the same time, what they also did, you know, they brought in Zay Jones from Jacksonville uh, for a, um, you know, for a look as well. And, you know, maybe they were actually considering signing Zay Jones, of course. He's familiar with offensive coordinator Nick Holtz from his time in Jacksonville. But, you know, it could have also have been a thing of, hey, Tyler, look, we need your decision. You're going to sign with us, come on in. If not, we gonna go. we going to go with Zay Jones. But in the end, we got Tyler Boyd, which I think was the better choice. He fits perfectly into what Brian Callahan has been asking about as far as a slot receiver, and he exactly fits that mold extremely well. And over chicken said, what's up, TNT? Jackie and Omar both saying, let Rand cook, chef. Boy, all ran, who was actually uh, who actually did an event, I believe, with Buck Rising last week, and he came out. He had the chef hat on and everything as well. So shout out to Rand, you know, definitely for doing that. But you know, Tyler Boyd is a very interesting, um, a very interesting look, and these are some of his career stats. Uh, that he had, you know, he spent the last eight seasons, of course, ever since he was drafted with the Cincinnati Bengals, 513 career receptions, 6,000 receiving yards, 31 career touchdowns, career average of 11.7 yards per catch. And of course, last season for the Bengals uh, had 67 catches, 667 yards and two touchdowns. 
Now, I was listening to Caroline Willie and D Mace a little bit yesterday. And even though Derek Mason was a fan of the signing, he did have a little bit of a concern. And, you know, I when it comes to wide receivers, there are a couple of people I tend to defer to when it comes to that. Teron Davenport, our guy TD, Chris Sanders, who is, you know, forever Titans wide receiver, and another forever wide receiver of the Titans, Derek Mason. Those two got those three guys. You know, TD, a former wide receiver in college. Also, um, Chris Sanders and D Mace, of course, former Tennessee Titan wide receivers. So when it comes to the wide receiver room, I refer I refer to those guys because they know what they're talking about. And the one thing that uh and Derek, thank you so much for the super chat, Derek. Super chats are definitely appreciated as well. Puts you to the front of the line. Derek says, is this a season of de- this is, a, is this season a development year for us? And that is a very good question, and I'm gonna answer that in just a quick second. But you know, 67 catches last year. Derek D Bates was like, you know, yeah, he put up some good numbers, but Jamar Chase was hurt for most for a lot of the year, and T. Higgins had a little bit of an injury issue. And you're telling and you're telling me you couldn't put up more numbers than that. And also, you know, Joe, but also you gotta take into account Joe Burrow was down too. But you know, like he said, Cincinnati was still putting up some points, even with Jake Browning. And I know, and I wanna say for I wanna say at some point. I believe Brian Callahan was interested trying to see about bringing Jake Browning in to back up Will Levis. Of course, Jake Browning ended up going back to Cincinnati, and we, of course, got Mason Rudolph. So, I mean, you know, it, it's very interesting that I that boy did not put up more numbers, but you got to think he was a number three. But also the last five games, you know, didn't really end as well uh, for him. Um and everything. So, I mean, you know, the numbers are the numbers. So there could be something there. Yeah, drum star. I did see that Tyreek Hill tweeted out saying Tennessee tight wide receiver room is getting nasty. And I definitely agree. Um, and you know, CJ 2K post saying to be fair, Joe Burrow was out, and that's true. That is very, very true. We do have to take that into account. But at the same time, as D Mace was alluding to, Bengals were still putting up points even with Jake Browning uh in the game. Uh, you know, and, and things like that. So there is something to say in regards to that. But at the end of the day, I absolutely love the pick. I really do. I love the pickup. Uh, I think it just solidifies him at a number three. Even though it is an older wide receiver core, it is a very, very good one. As long as these guys stay healthy, you know, as long as these guys stay healthy, this could be huge for the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, again, and now I'm bringing up Derek Roberts' Super Chat one more time. Again, Super Chats are definitely appreciated. I appreciate that. It helps me, helps the channel, as I am trying to build towards the future and things like that. So um, definitely appreciate the Super Chat. But as you said, is this season a developmental year for us? And that is a good question. Honestly, I would have to say it is... It is a bit of a development year, but I really think it is more heading towards a the with the moves that they've made, you know, draft, you know, picking, you know, keeping D Hop, not trading him, not releasing him, signing Calvin Ridley, getting Tyler Boyd, you know, uh, trading for Legarius Need, getting Chido Bay Awuzie. And I, I mean, we still need help at safety uh, as well. So we still need help at safety, um, you know, either a Justice Simmons or a Marcus May. I don't think this is as the big of a developmental year as people were originally thinking. 
because I think this is a year that I think the Tennessee Titans should, at minimum, be competing for the division title. I think they should be at least competing for the division. You know, um, I'm not saying that they're going to make the playoffs. And if they do, maybe they get one of those last wild card spots, maybe a sixth or seventh seed. But I think at least be competing for the division, I want to say. At least competing for the division, I at least expect, I want to say at least nine, you know, get to nine, maybe ten wins. And remember, it was kind of like what with Mike Malarkey. Mike Malarkey won three games, you know, had came in with a team that went two and 14 or three and 13. It is easier to go from three wins to nine wins but it is much harder to go from, say, 9 to 10 wins or 10 wins to 12 wins. Last year, the Titans were 6. Last year, the Titans finished uh, 6 and uh, 11. Finished 6 and 11. It is a little bit easier to go from 6 wins to maybe 9 wins. It is not as easy to go from 6 to maybe 10 or 11, but you could go from 6 to maybe 8 or 9. Again, I think they should at least get to 9 wins and compete for the playoffs or compete for the division title. That's at least what I think. I do think that they, you know, definitely should be doing that. Um, now, Phil Maddox comes in and says, to me, Boyd signing secures Burke's playing time because now the Titans have four similar receivers, which could which could be interchangeable, which won't tip off offensive packages. DCs will have a hard time game playing. That is actually a very interesting uh, comment to kind of put because now, you know, Mike Keith even said it on a video that he put on Twitter that the Titans are going to be throwing more now. The Titans are going to be throwing more now. It's going to be a little less on the running game, a little bit more in the passing game. You know, CJ Post thinking screen passes, and that could be something. Um, and I agree. You know, if everybody can stay healthy, they could be dangerous. Jaggy says, we're contenders this year. Bet on it. If this is successful from Stevie Boe, could be a could change the game for veteran players versus paying um, the high for big names. We'll have to see, either going young or going veteran. And so we're definitely going to talk about that. But also on the other hand, inside of Tyler Boyd, that is the question: What does this mean not only for Traylon Burks? I mean, we'll talk about Burks in particular, but this is sending a message not only to trailing Burks, but to guys like Kyle Phillips, guys like Mason Kinsey, um, other guy like Kiaris Jackson. You know, even, I would say, I'll even throw NWI in there. It just tells those guys, your spots are not safe by any means. Your spots are not safe. You know, NWI was brought back on a one-year deal. Kyle Phillips is still on his rookie deal as, you know, he goes into, I believe, year three. And so, you know, Burks, Phillips, Kinsey, their spots are definitely not safe. NWI at least can give you something on special teams being like a gunner, you know, being like a gunner, being on, you know, kickoff, punt, return, you know, kickoff, kickoff, return, punt, return, punt team. He at least gives you that, you know, Mason Kinsey maybe gives you a little bit of return game, but that's why you got uh, Jaquan Jackson from, t from Tulane. He could be a return guy. So unless Burks and Phillips can give you something else on special teams, their spot could be on the line. Definitely. And let's talk about Traylon Burks in particular because, you know, a lot of people thought 
You know, before Calvin really signed it, maybe Burks, if he could show something, he could be the number two. Now that really said he goes to number three. You know, he could be a possible number three. You know, questions was, were the Titans going to draft a Roma Dunzier or Malik Neighbors? And the rumors were coming out, I believe, from Jeremy Fowler or uh, it was from someone else. I know for a fact that, uh, that there was a rumor that came out that if the Chargers, if Joe Alt, you know, it was really Joe Alt, J.C. Latham, Malik Neighbors. And I believe Joe Alt was number one. When the Chargers took Joe Alt, you know, if, you know, it was really those three. Alt, Latham, Neighbors. If whoever was left on the board, that was the guy the Titans were going to pick. We don't know the particular order. But basically saying, if the Chargers, you know, the Chargers took Alt at five. Had Latham win at six to the Giants, Malik Neighbors was going to be the pick. And I think there were rumors that if Malik Neighbors was on the board at seven, even with Latham, that Malik Neighbors was going to be the pick at that time. So, um, looks like Latham was the third choice. But, when it comes to Burks, now that Burks... And Boyd is signed. Now Burks is the fourth guy. And it doesn't look fairly good for Traylon Burks. I mean, he's going into year three. You know, he's a first-round pick, which obviously, like Caleb Farley, they did not pick up his fifth-year option. I am pretty sure, barring a miracle season from Traylon Burks this upcoming season, I don't think they're going to pick up his fifth-year option either. But Burks... Only in his first two years has only been has only been in 22 of a possible career 34 games, and has only had 49 career receptions, 665 career yards, only one touchdown, and that was against the Eagles where he got knocked out with a concussion and that hindered his rookie year. And averages only 13.6 yards a catch. Last year, only 16 catches, 221 yards in 11 games. Not good numbers. You take a look at Tyler Boyd. He had more numbers than that. He had way more numbers than that as a slot guy. Now, he did play all 17 games, but he had more numbers in one year than Burks had in two. Not a good look, especially for a guy that's supposed to be a first round pick breakout guy so not exactly good uh for him on that now cj2k post says what what i hope will happen is Traylon will break out this season over anyone else on the roster probably outside of levis because our core right now is really really old and we need him to break out i mean According to D-Hop, D-Hop don't feel old. He said he want to finish his career with the Tennessee Titans. Calvin Ridley, even though he's 29, said, look, I lost some time. I feel like I'm 25. And then you got Tyler Boyd. So you do have some older guys, but you got experienced guys. So, again, you know, they may be a little bit older, but that doesn't mean that they can't produce. So we're definitely going to see it. TJ Post saying, Malik will be let go. What's going on? Not much value with him. We don't know. Right now he's quarterback number three. Rocky Boy says, I have us going 10 and 7. Jackie says, if the Texans could do it, we could do it. OC615 says, going from worst to first. In the whole AFC with 12 wins. I'm serious. That's being overly optimistic. I like your confidence. I'm going 9, 10 wins. I don't want to put my expectations too high. Over Chicken says sports books have us over under five, five and a half wins. Over under is 5.5. I would take the over. I'm going to take the over. I might put a bet on that. 
I think I might put a bet on that and take the over. I really would. I would take the over on that one. Yeah, Daquan Jackson. Now, one thing I am concerned about that I've heard about, he has had some issues with buffing punts. So that could be a bit of a problem. I don't know how you think we uh, I don't know how people think we'll have a worse record than last season after we literally upgraded every single position. I mean, because you know the national media. They only care about the Darlings, the Chiefs, you know, the Bengals, the Bills, the Cowboys, all those teams. You know they don't care for Tennessee. They don't watch. Jack the River said, we got a squad. Gary Roberts says, is Burks better than Corey Davis yet? Honestly, that that is the jury is still out on that one. I would say no at the moment. Uh, King Isaac, what's up with you, sir? Jaquan Jackson could be our Tank Dell. Could be. I'm glad we got Latham. I wanted Olu instead, but I'm gonna give Latham a chance. Over Chicken said neighbors is a star. Sad he went to the Giants, his career will be a waste. We'll definitely see, but I don't like his chance in New York. He'll be the main guy getting the ball. All the problem is they stink at quarterback. Titan Rossi in the building. What's up, Titan Rossi? Welcome in. Stevie BOE says last uh, staff didn't develop anybody, and that is true. I'm not going to disagree. It's an arms race with the Texans, yep. Traylon Burke's availability is better than Jamar Chase. That's something. Jamar, 60% of his game and out 40%. Traylon Burke's been available 60 and out 40. Production is another subject. And that's what I was about to get to, OC. You can't really compare the two with Jamar Chase and Traylon Burke. Even though Jamar Chase has had some injury issues, and I'm going to see if I can bring up Jamar Chase's stats. Jamar Chase has far outperform Traylon Burks in every possible way. There are no questions about that. Jamar Chase, I mean, even with injuries, still had 100 receptions. Traylon Burks, that is more than double. He's had more, he had double the catches and almost three times the yards in one year than Burks has had in two. And so um, it is not fair to compare the two. And I'm going to even say this. He only played 16 games, 16 out of 17 games last year, had 100 catches. He played in 12 games in 2022, had 87 catches. So he really only had one year where he really missed a lot of time. Um. And I want to say, so really in a possible 51 career games that Chase could have played, he's only, you know, he's only missed six games. So really, honestly, that's a little bit incorrect as far as availability. Jamar Chase has been far more available than Traylon Burks has ever been. So, and you know what? That's a good question. Who would be the odd man out? Ian says, I believe Phillips may be. And um, I definitely agree. Phillips is definitely a guy that could be on the outside looking in. And so, you know, Bert, like I said, Phillips, Kinsey, NWI, they're not very safe right now. And Traylon Burks' time is going to be cut significantly down. Because again, you're going to have a whole lot of mouths to feed. There's only one football, and Will Levis is going to have to find a way to spread the ball to everybody. Trilogy Taylor says, give up on Burks. He's not it. I mean, I am getting close to that. You know, I'm willing to give him a final shot, but this is his last chance. This is Traylon Burks' last chance. Because if he doesn't produce now, 
He's done. So, see, Jack River says, I can see 10 wins. Lou Man says, Pittsburgh wants Burks. I mean, it depends on what they're willing to give up. Anywhere between a third and a sixth might be good right now. If you can get a fourth for Burks, that would be awesome. Jaggy says, I hope we get Justin Simmons. We need it. We definitely got to address the safety position. Um, now, over chicken is correct on this. First year head coach and a first year DC. It might take them time. And that is correct. And the reason why I say this is because it goes into, it really segues into another subject that we're going to talk about. The Titan rookies are going to report on Friday. So they're going to report and they're going to work out this weekend, kind of get acclimated uh, in Nashville to the facility and all uh, the practices that we're going to be doing. So they're going to be in rookie mini camp from the 10th through the 12th. That's this Friday up until Sunday. And then they're going to begin, I believe, a seven-week rookie development program uh, starting on Monday the 13th. And so they're going to be starting that. And, of course, on May 20th, they're going to be joining the veterans uh, as OTAs begin. So you're going to have, you know, those practices. And then, of course, um, you're going to have those practices with the veterans, which will lead up to, um, you know, May 20th to 21st, May 23rd, and so on. You're going to have OTAs. And then um, you're going to have... Um, a little mini camp, um, and then you're gonna have some mini camps in there, and then you're gonna have the mandatory mini camp, uh, June 10th through the 13th. So, um, man, you know they're gonna have practices up until your know, mandatory mini camp, June 10th through the 13th, and then after June 13th, that's when all the players get time off. You better go on your vacations, enjoy your time with your families. Because then in late July, in late, um, you know, going into late July, that's when, you know, going into mid-late July, that's going to be time for training camp. And then we going to get down to business. So that's what, um, that's what we're looking at. And so J.C. Latham. To Vondre Sweat, and hopefully with you know with you know conditioning for Latham and Sweat, you know Latham came in at like 342 pounds. Hopefully he can get down to maybe closer to 330. You know I wouldn't mind seeing him down at 330, maybe 325. To Sweat, I think you know is at around 360. I think he needs to be getting down to about maybe 345. You know 345, 340. It'd be nice if he could get down to that point um, as time goes on. So, <laughs> my little brother said, no, Jamar is better. I That kind of goes without saying. Jack the River says, Burks and NWI could give D-Hop and Ridley a breather here and there. Keep him fresh, and he could dominate in that role. He could be a good role player. I mean, that would be disappointing, but I, I definitely could see that. Children said, dang, rookies got to miss Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sad but true. Um... Who's going to be a 1,000-yard receiver with so many weapons? I mean, in Brian Callahan's offense, Jamar Chase was a 1,000-yard receiver. You know, Jamar Chase had 1,200 yards. Um, You know, had 1,200 yards last season. You know, now T. Higgins dealt with some injuries. He had, you know, he dealt with some injuries. He had 656 yards last year, but he dealt with a lot of injury uh, last year. But I mean, 
you had some times where you had some times in that bingo offense that Chase had a thousand yards, Higgins had a thousand yards, and even Boyd either had a thousand yards or was right there at like eight, nine hundred yards. And so, you know, in that Cincinnati offense, there were ways where all three had a thousand yards receiving. So it is not impossible. Okay, sorry about that. But it is not impossible. It is not impossible. Yes, there are a lot of weapons and a lot of mouths to feed. But, you know, in that Cincinnati offense, it is possible. Because there was a year, I want to say it might have been 2021. It may have been 2021 or uh, 2019 where, let's see. Actually, I want to say it was 2021 where all three of them had 1,000 yard seasons. You know, um, for example, in, you know, in 20, like I'm looking at Jamar Chase and T. Higgins stats, and I'm going to pull up Tyler Boyd's individual stats with Cincinnati. So, you know, answer the question, it is possible. Like, now in 2019, 2019, he had 1,000 yards uh, receiving. Okay, T. Higgins came in in 2020. Yeah, T. Higgins came in in 2020, and then Jamar Chase came in in 2021. So let's start at 2021. 2021, T. Higgins had 1,091 yards. Jamar Chase, as a rookie, had 1,455 yards. So Jamar Chase had 1,455 yards. T. Higgins had right over 1,000 yards. And then Tyler Boyd was right there at 828 and he had 67 catches he had 67 catches 828 yards so he was right there at the cusp of a thousand yards and there were two other receivers with a thousand yards he had 67 catches t higgins had um 74 and then jamar chase had 81 so obviously in the Bengals offense they spread the ball around So it is not impossible. Let's see. Stevie says, what do you think about Malik and Mason? I think Mason's going to be the backup. I think Malik's time is coming to an end. I do. And it is a shame. I honestly think that um, he did not get a fair shake. He did not, yeah, Malik, Malik did not get a fair shake at all, and it, it, it's unfortunate. But you got to be able to step up in the time that you were given. He did get some starts, and he just did not produce. But Jack Ripper says Ridley could be a 1,000 yards. I think him and Hopkins could both have a 1,000 yards. It is very possible. Philomatty says JC really weighed at about 335, but his grill was an extra 10 pounds. Oh my God. <laughs> Could have two 1,000 yard receivers. I agree. Spears, the baby cheetah, will have 1,000 all purpose yards. That is very possible, too. Parker Davis, could do you see a world that a team trades a second for Burks that are desperate for a receiver? I'm going to say no. I think the earliest pick you might be able to get, um, you know, I'm with CJ Post. 
I think it's a fourth, maybe a third. I see that two K poses in my head. I think that's just being realistic. I would say the earliest is a fourth. Could be a late third, depending on who it is. And I agree. Uh, one of the earlier um, comments. It is going to take them time to gel. So do not be surprised if J.C. Latham at left tackle struggles early to adjust to going back to the left side. So... He's got to adjust. Do not be shocked if there's a little bit of a struggle out of the beginning. So, you know, um, that's going to be. Um, and then again, what Derek Robinson says, this is a developmental year. I think we should be competing for the division, but at the same time, there's really not a lot of excuses for Will Levin. This is the year to find out. Will Levis has the next maybe two years to show, is he the guy? Can he be that quarterback? Because if he can, whoo, it's going to be good. If he shows this year he could be the guy, then next year you could really, if, you know, D-Hop does not come back, or Boyd does not come back. You could draft a receiver high, and you could really, you could make some moves to really go for it. So that's going to be the key. It's really all about Will Levis. They are surrounding him with weapons. In the running game, you got Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard. Both guys can run the ball between the tackles. Also, Okay, yeah, sorry about that. But, yeah, I mean, right now, this is going to be the year to find out if Will Levis is the guy. You know, it, it's going to be that. If he can't produce with this O-line and all these weapons, he's a bust. And that is true. He is going to, this is the year to prove it. This is the year to prove it. And sorry about the sound, y'all. Um, but this is going to be the first year he's really getting to prove it. And like I said, I'm glad they got a new head coach now because he's going into year two. Now, he only got four years because he's a second-round pick. So you really got this year and next year before you got to make a decision before year four if you're going to give him the big money. So he really has two years, but this year is, this is going to be the start. This is where we're really going to start to find out if Will Levis can transition to being the guy. And that's what we're going to definitely find out. So, again, we talked about Tyler Boyd, uh, now a member of the Tennessee Titans, what it means for the rest of the wide receivers in the room. Um, you know, the rookies are going to be reporting on Friday. And also just saw tentatively the NFL uh, schedule release. Looks like it's going to be set for... I believe next week, actually next Wednesday to be exact, the 15th of May. That is a tentative date. So May, um, you know, May go live right when that schedule is released. So when the schedule gets released, um, I may actually, you know, I will, uh, we'll definitely do a show. Uh, as far as the schedule release, we'll definitely talk a little bit about that. So we definitely will have that coming up when the schedule gets released next week.
CJ 2K said, we're dealing with all this because of John Robinson trading AJ Brown, which I still think was a huge mistake. Callahan can develop levers way better than Vrabel. Miss Amy really has made some tough choices, spent a lot of money, but this team is, is on a good trajectory. I agree with that because, again, that's what I think. I, I said it before. I said Mike Vrabel's arrogance could destroy this team. And I really do think that Mike Vrabel held this team back. Because he wanted to do it his way or the highway. He eventually ended up taking the highway. Yeah, it'll either be Wednesday or Thursday night. But I think it'll definitely be Wednesday night. Uh, oh, get a Thursday night game at most. Yeah. Hopefully we get more than one prime time game. Be nice if we did. So we're definitely going to find that out. Um... But again, um, you know, definitely everybody, if you're in the Tennessee area, Arkansas, uh, be safe because I know there's a big storm uh, on the way. So definitely be careful with that. Parker Dave says, do you feel better about the Latham pick? Not yet. Still, I, I, I need to see something. I'm not convinced yet. You know, I, you know, I, I, I want to see. I mean, I'm starting to sort of not feel as upset as I was, but I, I need I need proof in the pudding. I'm not ready to convince. I'm not going to convince myself just yet. He's got to prove it to me. Once he does that, then I might feel better. I got to see him on the field against other talent. So we're definitely going to find out about that. Uh, in other news, oh, dang, other sports news. Got to give a congratulations to the fans, to WWE fans in France, Lyon, France, because the WWE had a premium live event called Backlash, and they were in France, um, in Lyon, not far from Paris. And when I tell you, that was one of the best crowds I have ever seen. It was incredible. It was incredible. I mean, they were into it the whole time. And, you know, they were lit when a guy like Jay Uso came out and did this. And everybody had their phone with their lights on and doing that. I mean, the whole crowd was doing that. And then... Every time there was a pinfall, you know, you know, ref go one, two, and then there's a kick out at two. I don't know what the chat was, but they did it every time there was a two count. It would go, ba -da -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know what they were saying in French, but um, it was incredible. It was definitely awesome. And y'all follow Jack the Ripper. Hit that like button. Sweat was my favorite pick. I like the sweat pick too, you know, contrary to what some others might have thought. Um, Jerry said Latham has a good personality. I like the pick. I have high hopes. I yeah, I just hope he's not another Isaiah Wilson. Because again, I have my worries. I know I shouldn't do this. But again, I don't trust Alabama offensive linemen. I don't. Just like I don't trust Georgia offensive linemen. <laughs> Go back and watch your reaction. Probably with the Latham pick when I need a laugh. I I, I, I understand. Everybody's going to enjoy that at my expense. I, I get it. So I, I don't mind that. I don't mind being the butt of a joke. You know, I, I'll talk bad about myself a little bit. Yeah, I was a little bit crazy. So I'll definitely do that. But um, definitely that. Definitely try to pay attention to the hockey playoff. I haven't really paid a lot of attention to the NBA playoffs. Um, probably part of it because the Grizzlies aren't in it. You know, the Warriors are not in it. The Lakers are out, you know, and things like that. I mean, mainly the team I'll probably look at is Denver maybe. So... 
we'll definitely have to see how that goes as far as the playoffs are concerned. Uh, maybe I'll pay a little bit more attention uh, to that. But um, before we do get out of here, though, even though I usually do this on the last Wednesday of the month, I got a I got a special shut your pie hole. I do. And y'all gonna trip off of this because this could have been a whole different show. And that is, I would like to give a shut your pie hole to one man in particular. And the person that I'm going to refer to is a man by the name by the name of Aubrey Graham. Aubrey Graham. Better known to the rest of the world as, of course, Drake. I need Drake to shut his pie hole because Kendrick Labar has killed him verbally. Kendrick Labar did not just kill him. He murdered him. He annihilated him. Drake can't come back from this. This dude dissed on Kendrick Lamar, and then Kendrick Lamar basically said, oh, you want to go there? Okay, I got you. I got you. And Kendrick Lamar has crushed Drake at every possible turn. The dude has come out with three or four diss tracks in the last five, in the last week. He's come out with four diss tracks. I've listened to two of them. Meet the uh, obvious to Euphoria and meet the Grams and meet the Grams. Oh my God! Ooh. I'm like I was ready. I was ready to preach Drake's eulogy at that one. Kendrick Lamar went in on this dude's family, like all of them. He said, "You know, dear to his dad, dear to his mom, dear to his son." Dear to his daughter that he doesn't claim. I'm like, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm like, man, Kendrick Lamar. You could tell, like, this was coming from a real place of, I don't know if I want to call it hate, but it was definitely strong dislike. Probably was hate, but Kendrick Lamar has been holding this in like he strategically planned it. This wasn't just something like an instant reaction. Like he well thought out every all the verses he put together. I mean, OC says Kendrick's beats are ass. I can't listen to it too many times. I, I will have to disagree with you on that one. Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar can flow. He got bars. Kendrick Lamar got bars. No doubt about it. And he killed Drake. He killed him. Like, it. this was worse than Remy Ma killing Nicki Minaj with Sheether. And after that, you rarely heard Nicki Minaj say anything else about Remy Ma after that. And Drake was basically, he tweeted out saying, you know, um, we got to be less impatient and all this and that and, you know, and everything. And then Kendrick Lamar is like, oh, really? You you, you, you want to, you want some more? And he's like, I got plenty more when I can. I got plenty more. So, <laughs> I mean, woo-wee. And see, Remy Ma Sheetha was lethal. But Kendrick Lamar? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I was like, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Drake. Because I, I just don't see how, Ken how Drake can come back from that. 
And then, of course, there was a rumor of a drive-by shooting at Drake's house in Canada. So, I'm like, ooh-wee, it, it, it's serious. It's really serious. Jackie said, is this beef a publicity stunt? No, nah, I think this is real. This is real. I, I, I don't think this is no publicity stunt. Like, you don't go that hard in on a man's family if it was a publicity stunt. You know, if you talk a little bit, if you come out with one diss track about, if Kitchen the Bar came out with one diss track about Drake, that's one thing. But this dude that came out with four diss songs, with three or four diss songs in less than a week, and he not only talked about Kendrick Lamar, he talked about the man's family. So, OC said, wait a minute, I didn't say he got bars. The boy be stabbing, but I can't get with his beat selection. Now, I have to go back, but I mean, I, I, just, I just go with the fact he do have bars. He, he got bars. You know, I have to go back and check the beat now. The beat the ground beats was a bit funny. You, you, we, we can't deny that. Philip Maddox says, on behalf of the Light Skin Coalition, we have traded the rights of Drake for Mexican offensive tackle and casket. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Yes. Yes. So, Drake, shut the pie hole. Take the loss. You know, go off into the sunset. Quit your music career now. You and Nicki Minaj need to go live happily ever after somewhere and and and, and leave leave rapping to the professionals because you are clearly not one. But everybody, that's gonna just about do it for me tonight. Uh hopefully everybody again stay safe during the weather. Again, if you haven't, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit all of the notifications on YouTube. If you're watching on um, Twitter X, definitely uh, retweet the show and give a like. If you're on LinkedIn, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I'm an expiring broadcaster, a sports broadcaster. You know, trying to make it in the business. So hire me. I could do a good job as a reporter. You know, sports reporter or, you know, a uh, just a reporter, producer. I could do a good job. Give me a shot, y'all. <laughs> but I thank everybody for tuning into the show tonight. I'm your man, Blue Enforcer, a.k.a. The Truth. Uh, he also says, us dark skins won. <laughs> OC says, on behalf of the darkies, I select Chris Brown for for. For his Quavo diss. <laughs> wow. Yeah, y'all tripping. I, I love this, y'all. But uh, again, y'all, I thank everybody for tuning in. I know we had almost like 40 or more people tuning in. I definitely do appreciate that. I hope everybody has a very good rest and safe Wednesday and a good rest of the week. Also, happy early Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, definitely, I know Mother's Day is Sunday. Fellas, make sure y'all take care of your moms. I got to make sure I take care of my mom and my mom-in-law, too. I got to make sure I do that and do my job right. So, of course, Chris Frazier, like he said about Corey Davis and like he said about Marcus Mariota, Burks is done. I wonder who he's going to say next after that. So, everybody, appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have a very good rest of your Wednesday. I thank y'all for tuning in to the show. And at the end of the day, y'all, Y'all know what's up. Tighten up. Because that's all we know how to do. Good night. Sleep tight. Be safe. I gots to go.